told my dad, like, or, or at the time he said kimchi stew. Because my dad <laughs> loves kimchi jjigae, which is kimchi stew. And he's like, when we, we go and we eat it, do you regret eating it? And he's like, no, what the hell does this have to do with a murder? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, stop Get to the hungry, point, bro. dude. The f- of course I would love some stew. Like, you want, I'm a post yeah. something. What's <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted to know if we could talk about, like, I think it could be really helpful for, for our audience. Um, mm-hmm. so if you talked about your experience growing up with a dad that was drinking mm-hmm. and kind of explaining how he was able to overcome that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, um, I didn't know, but my dad had gone through a lot of trauma as a kid. Like, and I, you know, he never shared anything. Most of the Asian parents, like their dads and probably Hispanics can relate to this too their parents don't really share like anything right um so my dad had went through a lot of stuff he told me this like you know after we kind of reconciled and everything right so he said that um he had like um did some things in the past like when he was in Korea that he wasn't proud of like he robbed people and he hurt people and stuff you know and apparently from what he told me like a person was killed because of him so he always had that guilt and then he kind of drowned out his sorrow with alcohol oh, wow right? and i didn't know that <clears throat> so that must be wild for him where he got into criminal world and then his own kids got into the same yeah that's what he would always say yeah. when he would beat me i i noticed that he would be like you're never gonna end up like me you're never gonna like he would say stuff like that oh. and then i was just like damn bro what are you talking about you know yeah. Like you're gonna, you're not gonna live that life. He'll say stuff like that. But he would never elaborate on it. Exactly. Huh? Well, that's wild though, because he must have came here to change his life and do all that and start fresh. Exactly. And then his kids end up doing the shit yeah. that he was doing. Yeah. And it wasn't just one; it was both kids. Usually, there's like a balance, you know, mm-hmm. one bad apple. It was like both of us were rotten, bro. You know, and um, he didn't understand like the culture, like of gangbanging, but also of people getting picked on. Like in in Korea, I guess they didn't really like they they would bully each other, but it wasn't like heck like crazy like getting jumped and stuff like that, right? When I was ten, I got jumped by four, yeah. you know, and I'm like, he he just thought that was so. He's like, who, who, when when I got jumped, I remember vividly. He was like, who would jump a kid? Like who? Why would these guys beat you? Other kids. Oh, so he didn't even believe you <laughs> yeah, at all. Nah, he didn't he believe that was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So he grabbed me. I remember he was like pretty strong. Grabbed me by my foot, like dragged me in the room and beat the shit out of me. That was literally like 30, 40 minutes prior to me getting beat up, getting jumped. Damn. So I got jumped and then I got beat. So when you got, when you got jumped, were there like bruises and stuff? I mean, there was like, I had like a little bit of a bloody nose. Like I had like some welts on my, you know, and, but I didn't have my shoes and I had my backpack. So my, my, my dad was like, where's your backpack and where are you? Sh-? You know what I mean? Like he thought like you just threw it away. Yeah, he's yeah. cause I wasn't doing good in school too. You know, oh. I would rip up like homework or like fold my report card like a thousand times to make it this way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like straight yeah, up, yeah, you know, yeah. I'll be real. But so he was like this fucking kid, man. What's yeah, yeah. wrong? He's dumb. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but in the end, like <laughs> have my stuff taken and, and I would tell him and he's like, wow, this kid is such a manipulator. That's what my dad would always say. Like, you're such a manipulator that like you, you have to do this. Like you have to go to this like length. That's your reliance. Wow. On Man. And then he just beat my ass. Yeah. And I would steal. I was a straight like klepto, bro. Like I would steal everything <laughs> as a kid, you know? And and so he he hated that. Like he hated people who lied and he hated people who steal, you know? So um but yeah, and, and from that, I mean he just would beat me and it just made me want to run to the streets all the time. Like that's why my homies before they were my homies they hit me up they're like you want to hang out i was like hell yeah i'd rather be like with you guys than be at home you know mm-hmm. so this was junior high for you or elementary this was um i started kicking at 11 so like and then but it was like 11 to 12 like right i would say yeah like 12 did you go to garvey or i went to garvey yeah. immediate that's like the breeding grounds of Asian gangs, bro. I went to Garvey. For so many generations. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. Was he like the kind of alcoholic that was like drunk every day? But he's a functioning alcoholic, which oh. was crazy. So he would like take alcohol like to work and shit like yeah. that. That dude yeah. loved drinking soju, like mm. two bottles like in one like one gulp and that'll that's like how he, what he wakes up to. He's like Ooh. Korean on the outside, Chinese on the inside. For sure, bro. He speaks Korean too? Yeah, he speaks fluent Korean. People think he's Korean. People think I'm Korean. Yeah. Like, they're like, you're Korean. I'm like, no. You speak Korean too? I understand it. Oh. I understand it, yeah. But yeah, my dad would just, I fluent in Mandarin, but 
yeah so he would he would kind of like do that to, to not just me but my mom my, my, my older brother uh, my older brother was a really good kid though like he actually didn't get into the gangs and stuff like he got in when he was like maybe um, around 17 like 16 17 oh later yeah. wow what what got him into it i think it was just the bullying too like it got to a point where people were bullying him my brother i remember he would be like really respectful to people he would like you know i love you guys and he would have like some friends but he was always that kid that was just really nice to people but they took it for like weakness you know and then they were jumping him and beating his ass too and then he was like man fuck this. like race based yeah for sure and after that he's like i'm just gonna join the hood like whatever you know for protection me i was more like just a knucklehead, bro. And my, my dad, you know, it was more like between me and my father. We had a really bad relationship. Uh, so more than your brother? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So then for that, you just felt like you needed to find a family outside of your own family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that's how I felt, you know, initially. And then they treated you well, too. Like, it's crazy. Like, in the beginning, like, my homies would take me out and do everything, like, and just treated me with a lot of love, bro. I remember, like sitting in the cars or you know like hanging out with them like this is my family like i will die for these people mm -hmm. and that's that that feeling was like so strong it was crazy but also you said that your 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 set also had a lot of actual family members right yeah they were like mad brothers within the yeah. group yeah yeah mad brothers. we're talking about this in a different context um totally different context so not applying it, but um the idea of like finding those surrogate families especially at like a very very low point in your own personal you know journey and stuff like that so like when there's like a broken household or something that's very very difficult to like find that even just some sort of remote acceptance somewhere else is like a very empowering feeling and stuff like that so i'm assuming you definitely were experiencing some of that yeah yeah and i think that's a lot of people have experienced that where people who don't live that lifestyle can't really understand outside looking in like why would you join a gang, you know? But there, there's a lot of like... It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Like, if you're if you're getting your ass beat at home, which I was, or like, when my dad split, it, it's... I'm with a depressed mom that doesn't even leave her room. And it's so sad. And then you go to somebody else's house where the parents are never there. And then you do... It's like a slumber party, really. It's like a... It's like a real bad version of a slumber party. You have like... 10 15 fucking boys in there sometimes girls you do whatever the fuck you want sometimes you just do drugs all night and you go let's go steal a car for no fucking reason and it's exciting and stuff and i'm like you know what we if if we had like skateboarding or something like white people have extreme sports right they go <laughs> surfing and shit and they that's how they get their yeah. aggression out but they also have their crews and their stuff friendly. skate crews or whatever they have that bond and i'm like maybe if if we had something like that you know it would have it would have been a little bit different because you get bored you're a bunch of fucking high aggression boys that get the shit kicked out of you all the time and you're just like i need to go fuck some shit shit up too i need to feel big because i'm getting my ass beat all the time yeah. I would feel like that a lot. Like, yeah. I would feel like when I looked at other people, I would have this envy, like, envious heart, right? I'm like, dude, they're so happy and I'm not happy. So that really made me into a monster, too. Like, I'm like, why are you guys happy? Like, they have nothing to do with me, but I'm like, why are you guys happy if I'm not happy? And I had that and I carried that a lot. And I wow. think that's what made me kind of crazy. Did you know that back then or is it looking back now, you're like... Looking, looking back. I see. Yeah, at that time, I didn't know. I just felt rage and I was just like... And I didn't think, but now that I think about it, I'm like, man, it's really because I just was, it was all, it's, it all started from my heart. You know, I talk about it in software, like why, why I joined a gang too is not like people think that because you're from a bad neighborhood and there's gangs and drugs and violence all around you, like you're going to join a gang. Right. But that's not necessarily true. Cause if that's the case, people around me, all my, like all my people that aren't like gang members, they should be in a gang as well. Right. I remember my, my homie, like I grew up with them. We were walking in the apartments and I was 12 and he was 12. Right. I had already been put on at this time. And my homie, he was like same background. He had an alcoholic father. Mom was like, you know, whatever. He was Taiwanese, um, but same shit, same age. So we're walking through the apartments and 
this this like known guy at that time drugs was just like weed meth and so it wasn't like pretty hardcore mm. like fentanyl and stuff right so he had a joint and he's like hey you guys want to smoke and i was 12 years old i think that kid was like 16 17 and i was like yeah let's do it i'm down <clears throat> but my friend he was like what if i get addicted like that's what he said and that sounded so absurd to me huh. i was like bro off of one like puff, like what the hell is wrong with you? You're, you're fucking, you're a weenie, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not a weenie, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but he, but then he, no, he keeps going, and he's like, yeah, but like, what if I ruin my life? Like he started saying, Whoa, he's what an insightful years old. dude. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> I was not that smart. Yeah, man. and I was like, bro, you're kind of a downer, weird. fool. Yeah, like straight up, I was like, you're yeah. weird, bro. Stop being I was kind of like that. Dude. <laughs> Stop being weird, man. He's yeah. like, whatever, man. And we just laughed at him. Yeah. Me and the dude. Yeah. Well, my life story, you guys know, it, I ended up doing more hardcore drugs, whatever, whatever. But this kid, he ended up graduating high school, going to Cal Berkeley. He works with Deloitte now, top Whoa. five, you know, accounting firm or whatever. What was the difference? Like his, I could see that he, I trusted myself like hella strong and he didn't trust himself. He couldn't say like accurately whether he was going to get hooked or he wasn't. Mm. So he never even touched it. Whereas my dumbass, 12 years old, seeing crackheads around and meth heads and all that, was like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have an addictive personality. And Whoa. You understand? So in that Whoa. point, I could tell in my heart, I trust myself a lot. That's why I talk. Like we had yeah. stupid yeah. confidence. Yo, that's yeah. trippy that the, yeah. that the way that that pastor had explained it to you is mm -hmm. so applicable to that yeah. game. Yes, yes. Oh, that shit, comes. you're right. Yo. Because I was just like, yeah, I'm down. Like, oh, I'm going to join a game. I'm good. I'm not going to get shot at. I would carry guns. But like, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to shoot it. I'm just going to, you know, pump yeah. fake, right? Yeah, right. And when, when people mm. start busting at you, you're yeah. like, damn, you have to. So we everything stems from for for me was trusting myself, yeah. like oh I don't I'm I'm not gonna get addicted I ha, I'm not, I don't have an addicted person like bro I did meth e coke all that stuff you know so same thing oh my god I said the same thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're right dude it is it is that confidence of you know best and you're so stubborn from it absolutely. and it makes us stupid yeah. Cause we're we're right, right? If a person, you guys ever been around a person who's right all the time? Like that, you can't get through to them. Yeah. But we were those people. Yeah. So when yeah. people would say something like, "Man, shut the fuck up," like you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's where I realized, like, oh, that's where I fucked up. Whereas this kid, he didn't trust himself. He was like, "Yeah, I don't know about that." And he never touched it. If you don't touch the drugs, you can't get hooked onto the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. He never joined a gang. He's from the same area. He grew. He knows all my homies. But you know, he just comes out and, and hangs out with us time to time, eats some food, but he has a way better life than all of us. Just that one like part of his heart. And it made a huge difference. Uh, I was able to wow. see that. So you said um, that you had an addictive personality. You never got hooked on drinking the same way that your dad was? Nah, that, so that part, <clears throat> I really hated my dad and I was like, I'm never gonna be like, oh, you know. Man. But everything else, like, started with weed and like, back then, ecstasy was like a big thing, you know. So that and then, yeah, but other than that, I mean, I didn't, and I liked a lot of coke, but I ain't gonna, I was like a coke head too. <laughs> <laughs> fun time? My buddies like got into to <laughs> smoke and crack a lot during that time. Yeah, that was big back then yeah. too. Yeah. A lot of people won't admit it, but. They would call it coke, but no one was doing lines, man. That shit was hella expensive, but everyone was smoking crack. For sure. That was a That's big so thing, true. dude. Yeah. And I lost a lot of friends just like, their minds lost, like, just locked up because they want money for crack and they did the stupidest shit yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like that i i mean like they think that only rocks the black community but man it came to sgv like it was it was first the weed then the party drugs and the meth or the weed and the meth yeah and then and then the crack came and that was the fucking weird shit dude i think um I, I i have a question about that when you when you touched upon like your buddy didn't do nothing but you did right so it's not just being poor in a fucked up situation there's something in us that's attracted to like a group and wanting to feel that love and whatever while these guys don't need it what do you think that is oh, yeah even yeah that? even though his dad was also alcoholic too right yeah. is that does that beat his ass too? yeah his dad beat his ass too but like I said, it all comes down to the heart. Like, there's drugs everywhere, but not everyone's a drug addict. There's yeah. gangs everywhere, not every. So it does come to that 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 heart, and I don't know how that comes about. But I think he was able to just kind of naturally have that fear in him, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. It, like 
when you grow up like us, we don't have any fear. It's dumb. You're stupid. They call it stupid down. Yeah. You just do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Cause you want to be crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Reputation. So, yeah. So it, it's, it's, it, but at the end of the day, I noticed that like the people who don't trust themselves versus the people who super trust themselves, like the ones that trust themselves that follow their gut, they're, they have such a more like stressful, like miserable life compared to people who are just like, okay, I'm going to run the hamster wheel. Like this is how life is. And you know, they follow like like the guidance of other people mm -hmm. you understand whereas we're like no we're gonna do whatever we yeah. want and it was just bad bro. Yeah. damn so at the time that you um that your dad finally and you guys kind of hashed it out mm -hmm. and he decided to stop drinking mm -hmm. um how did he even do that how did he start so, <clears throat> so what happened was he noticed that i stopped carrying us so i would always carry a gun just like as an ex like it was like putting on shoes, bro. It was yeah, like oh, yeah, yeah. socks, but whatever, and then strap, you know? But my, and then my dad would hate that. He was like, why do you do that? Why do you do that, you know? Even when I was coming home, like I was still on parole, but I was like, oh, I had that mentality. Like, what if somebody tries to get me? Somebody tries to make their name for themselves, uh, right? So my dad noticed, but after about like a year and a half, two years, I started going to church and doing all this stuff. He noticed that I stopped like drinking. I stopped like, you know, doing the drugs and carrying guns. And he just thought it was weird. Like he was just like, what the hell's wrong like, with This is not kid? you. Yeah. <laughs> was he like, the man, hell's right with my are kid? you soft now or what? Yeah. <laughs> he starts punking. Yeah. yeah. He's like, come on, man. Uh, Freeze the broom off. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You better pick up that gun. <laughs> <laughs> you better, you better. <laughs> But yeah, he um so he goes to he goes to my mom and he goes, Is Johnny doing something? Like is he doing drugs or something that's like mellowing him out? And I'm like, what the hell? Like he doesn't because we don't really like talk like that. Oh yeah. Because yeah. I haven't really like I went to the church, but I was still kind of like not fully full fledged, right? So then he goes to my mom, he's asked my mom, and my mom just goes, oh, he's been going to church, right? Like really trying, you know, to like live better. And this dude, he goes to um, my pastor, the same guy who laced me up, right? And then he asks him, like, somehow they have a conversation and my pastor just starts busting open like Bible verses, right? And he hit on something about that murder, basically. Like what my dad did. Oh, so yeah, he good. Him, he <laughs> His pastor's this, good, man. You know, I showed him this, um, this verse and I remember it. it was Romans chapter seven, verse 17. It says like, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. So there's a, basically he's saying that you didn't want to kill that person. So he made that example. Like, let's say you guys go and you eat steak, right? He told my dad, like, or, or at the time he said kimchi stew. So my dad <laughs> loves kimchi chige, which is kimchi stew. And he's like, when we, we go and we eat it, do you regret eating it? And he's like, no, what the hell does this have to do with a murder? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, stop <laughs> to the hungry, point, bro. dude. What the fuck, man? Of course I would love some stew. Like, you want, I'm a postmate yeah. something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, um, because you wanted to do that, you didn't, you don't regret it. But why is it that when you did those things that you thought you wanted to beat him up, you wanted to hurt him. And then when he died, why did you regret it? It's because you didn't want to do it. Damn. And then that just like opened my, my dad's mind, you know? And he was like, what the hell? Like, that's why you regret the things that you do. So it's not you, there's a force that's dragging. Mm. And my dad, he liked to work out a lot. So he said, you know, you're, you're like a, like a strong person, right? But let's say there's four bodybuilders. If they lift you up, like, and take you away, it's like you, they can take you by your will. It's, it's stronger than you basically, mm. right? So this force inside of us, it's really strong, right? So he told my dad, you don't want to be depressed. Why are you depressed? It's because the depression is stronger than you, right? You don't want to feel bad. We don't want to be regretful, but it's stronger than you. That comes from sin. And he started to explain it to my dad the same way he explained it to me. And my dad was like, oh shit. And then in the end, he talks about Jesus. But my dad was like, I don't want to hear about Jesus, this white yeah. guy. Yeah. He's like, he's not white, he's Jewish, technically. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. messing with him, you know? <laughs> and, but he breaks it down to my dad and he straight up explains to him that, you know, actually you're perfect. But your thoughts, they keep telling you you're not. They keep coming to you. And then he explained it to my dad too. So when you lay up in your bed at night, when your kids are asleep and you know everything else, like your wife is asleep, do you ever have thoughts that come to you? And he's like, yeah. He's like, it always starts like this, a really small thought. Oh, you're inadequate. Oh, you're lonely. And then it starts to snowball. Mm. You're lonely, you're dumb, what's, what's, what, man? And then he says, random flashbacks come. You start to regret stuff. 
right? And then my dad was like shocked because he thought he was the only one that went through that. Yeah. Oh, but man. yeah, wow. you articulate that thing, right? Like you do with you. Yeah, and he was like, so you, like, like he's, he, he used his arm, for example. He said, let's say your arm comes out and it grabs the water and you pull it back, that's your arm. But if it comes and you're just doing this and it's you're like, you're trying to stop it, it's no longer your arm. Or someone behind you is pushing your arm and you have no control, it's not yours. He said, likewise, when you have thoughts, if they're your thoughts and you're like, okay, I'm not, I'm done thinking negative shit, I'm done. Then right then and there, neg your thoughts should stop. But if something continuously keeps going, it's no longer your thoughts. Do you understand? Like if it keeps coming to you, it's not you. He started explaining the spirit, like evil spirit. And, and my dad was just like, this totally makes sense. Whereas everyone else, he always thought church was like brainwashing people. Yeah. Making them, you know, like, you know, take their money and this and that. But he was able to see that the pastor knew him just like he knew me without even knowing him, basically. Wow. And that's why my dad was like, there's something different about this, like, Bible stuff. You know, he grew up in Korea. Korea is, like, really Christian, yeah. actually. It's overall yeah. a Christian yeah. country. Yeah. But my dad hated them. He would throw, like, bottles at the, the churches and stuff. <laughs> it was, he hated people yeah. like that. He's like, you guys are dumb. And But then he started to, he comes to church now. That's awesome. Yeah, and he's just like, man, it's, it's, it's just different. You know, like, his heart is different. And so the pastor told him, how do you quit drinking? You know, like... You have to, the thought will come that you, you want to drink, but you don't have to follow that thought, you know? So he explained to him, when you're out in Korea, there's vendors, hot dog, hot dog, you know, they like saying stuff, right? Do you hear hot dog and you just run and spend all your money and buy it? No, you think about it. Uh, when's the last time I had a hot dog? Oh, that's right. No, you know what? I had one last week. I'm good this time. And based off of the thinking, you make a decision. Likewise, thoughts come, right? Hey, you want to drink? And they make you even feel like you want to drink. But he said, you don't have to follow that. You can actually sit back and realize that that's not your thought. There's an evil thing that's making you do it. Because when you drink, what happens? Your wife is miserable, your sons are miserable, you're miserable. So my dad started to, he started to give him like that braking system. And then my dad, like slowly but surely, he started cutting down. Wow. wow. Like Some that. people just need the tools to exactly. the structure, <laughs> right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. all about the thing, like deep thinking and overthinking is different. We, yeah. we mix the two. Oh, I'm, 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 I, I think deeply. No, you're overthinking. My dad, with most people, are overthinkers, right? They think deep. No, they don't think deep. I'm sure you can like relate to this, but if you felt disrespected in the past, you couldn't let that go, and you needed to hurt them, huh? Like. That was so hard for me, like, and I felt like such a bitch if I didn't do anything. Yeah, bro. And if and if I just, I'm like my reputation and all that. If I don't hit them, at least, I feel like such a bitch. Yeah. But then now I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. What's the point? But back then, I feel like everybody that's in that world where you got bullied, yeah. it all starts at bullying. Yes. You get beat up as a kid from whoever yeah. because they want to take your shoes or whatever, right, right. and then later. You're still thinking about, you're like 17 and you're thinking about that 10 year old that mm. bullied you. And then all the revenge, you're taking it out on these random guys that disrespected you a little bit. Maybe they did, they maybe they just look in your eye, you know? Yeah. And I remember just lashing out. Yeah. It's so crazy. And you still remember the, the first bullies. Yes. And then that's the, that's the overthinking that you're talking about. You just, I'm not gonna let them disrespect me. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would be like that too, bro. Like anyone who looked at me a certain way, I couldn't even handle it. Like it was so crazy. Yeah. If you think about it, they're just looking at you. Like we had mentioned it earlier, like who are those guys? We're like, oh shit, we're eating our freaking JJ Cafe. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 oh, it yeah. yeah, but it was, it, 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 like he said, like Bar said it, that PTS, it just pops out of you. Yeah. But I also have that even till this day. There are well, you've been in it deeper. Like oh. you've been, like I had a long, lot of years to get away from that. But shit. I still have it though. Like I just don't even like going clubbing or anything. I just yeah. feel like yeah, shit's gonna true. pop off. Yeah. Yeah. It's never gone completely, yeah. but exactly. yeah. Even but. if it's like 5% or 1%, there's just still like, like I see people just, they're able to drink and just like lose control or whatever. Not at a party? No, yeah, no. Like, in a yeah, public yeah. space, I have to be sharp a little bit no matter yeah. what, you know? When there's drinking and it's night? Yeah, yeah. I'm like. That's where Anthony comes out. <laughs> <laughs>